Hello people of Earth, so you'd like to know how to get into Stellenbosch University. Well, here are a few easy steps and tricks to get you on your way. Psych! Did you really think that I'd give up that easily? <laughs> Just kidding, y'all thought, you thought. So guys, hello, how are you? Welcome back to my channel, hey. Welcome back to my channel. I have been asked this question quite a few times and it is, how do I get into Stellenbosch University? How to apply, how to get in, how is the experience? Diddly -dee. I'm currently drinking tea right now because I'm so cold. Guys, I'm so cold. And I don't know why. Right now, it is the 1st of May. Wake up. It's the 1st of the month. Hey. It's the 1st of May currently. And yeah, you know, like May. I don't know, it's supposed to be autumn. But like, it's 23 degrees outside apparently. But in the same breath, I'm cold. I have a blanket on my legs right now. And I'm drinking tea, very hot tea. So yeah. Okay, so let's begin and not make this video too lengthy. I just wanna be concise, get straight to the point. So, how to get into Stellenbosch University? First things first, and this is the case with every student or potential university student in the country, is grade 11, end of year results and matric mid-year results. In order to apply to university in the first place, you have to apply with your grade 11 end of year results. And in my case, I applied to every single university I could think of because that position in university getting accepted was not promised. So I applied to every South African university that I could with my end of year grade 11 results. You apply with your grade 11 end of year results. You can just get your report card photocopy it and upload it onto the website of that university that you're applying to. After that, you'll get a conditional acceptance into that university based on your grade 11 end of year marks. And then during matric, as you are going through the motions of the year, you will write mid-year exams, you know, June, July exams. And then you go onto the university website again and apply or I guess update your profile with your major metric results. And then, you know, the, the universities are just keeping track of your results and what you're getting. Those are the results, the marks you need to apply with before your final, yeah, end of year metric results. These, this is the first step. Secondly is now during metric. So during metric is very, very important. It's one of the most important steps. So as you are in metric, now you have written the mid-year exam, but every university requires their students or prospective students to have written the NBTs. The NBTs are the National Benchmark Tests. This test consists of two parts, the AQL and the MAT. So the AQL is Academic Literacy and Quantitative Literacy, and then the MAT is Maths. And as you've heard the rumors, the math test is done without a calculator. Yo, your brain is tested. Hey. I was like, guys, really? Do we really rely on calculators that much? Thank you. No, thank you. So every matric student needs to write the NBTs. And they are hosted or written in various venues. For example, the University of Pretoria, the University of Joburg, probably in the universities of each province in a sense like yeah they're, they're really held there but more information can be found on the nbt website which i will put down below nbt.ac.za so the crucial point now is when to write your nbts because this was the case in my situation i wanted to go to stellenbosch but stellenbosch required students to have written the NBTs before the 31st of July. And I believe it's still the same. I was looking at the cutoff date because every single university has 
a final date in which they allow you to write a due date and if you write after that then they won't accept you like your results will be given to them too late so in Stellenbosch's case it was the 31st of July so I had to write my MBTs way before that so yes I went to the venue sat down and you just sit down with many students so it's three hours for the AQL three hours for the MAT it's three hours in the morning break three hours in the afternoon and you, know, you just go right da, 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 da. and with the MBTs thankfully they just are sent straight to the university so you don't have to think about oh when are my results coming out when can I send them etc etc yes you'll be able to access your results but they go straight to I don't know to the universities you've applied to maybe I don't know how they do it in the system just like matric end of your results, but you don't have to send those results to the university. I believe, I don't think you have to apply after you've written the MBTs. Like I don't think you have to keep updating your university profile, but if you do, then yeah, I don't think you do with MBTs. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But in any case, if you have to, then you will just like, you will anyway get all your results. Like you will always get all of your results, MBT results, interview metric results you'll get them so if need be then you can still update your university profiles with those results and also i forgot to mention that both nbt tests are multiple choice questions so yeah multiple choice gets you guys that thing gets you because you think oh yeah i got five cool cool there's no five that's when you know you're off you're off the rails guys you're off the track why was i getting so many answers that were not there on the paper ha and then sometimes maybe it might be good sometimes you get the answer that's there but then you just second guess yourself like is this right are they trying to trick me so yeah multiple choice questions don't be fooled so firstly grade 11 end of your results grade 12 major results secondly the nbts which is the national benchmark test that every student writes except the students in 2020 they didn't write it or i think they wrote it online which is understandable and then thirdly grade 12 final results so with your final matric results you just study write the exams and thereafter you wait for a month or two for your results to come out and because you'll be receiving a national senior certificate these results come from the department of education so everyone in the country gets them at the same time and then after you have done that so now right you've had conditional acceptance after having applied with your two results from grade 11 and mid-year exams grade 12 then when you update your profile with your final results then you'll get provisional acceptance into the university so yes that was the case with Stellenbosch I did all those steps, wrote my NBTs. Guys, I was about to write my NBTs like in October because I was thinking, oh yes, I want time. You know, I don't want to clash with matric mid-year. But the best thing I could ever have done was to write my NBTs beforehand because then I was just on time for all the universities. It actually removed all the pressure from me because the final matric exams are just way more hectic. So I'm happy that I didn't push it until the end and in the end I was on time for my Stellenbosch University application. Also I wanted to mention when you get conditional acceptance you get a specific reference number and then after you've gotten provisional acceptance you get a student number. So then you use that for correspondence between yourself and the university. With Stellenbosch University please do check the Stellenbosch University yearbook because it gives information on the degrees you want to study and what results you have to achieve in order to be accepted into those programs yeah so you definitely have to meet those requirements definitely check for your specific course that you want to study what the requirements are and then you can work towards that it is very very possible believe you me and yeah then after you've received your provisional acceptance you will get a student number then you'll be getting emails from su about when to start and especially if you're a first year then you have to like arrive 10 days or a week earlier for orientation but basically that is the process that is what i did and i got in it was a very smooth process thankfully 
and the university made it really easy they were very clear just all of their points were laid across bare so i really appreciate that i really enjoyed my experience as much as i could studying law because law is not easy but you know what you can do what yeah so i hope that helped thank you so much for watching this video you can do it please just know especially this is what i had to tell myself is after matric exams i was there like oh my gosh but what if i'm now just on holiday enjoying my holiday and my marks are there looking shaky and then my dad just said you can't do anything about it now so just enjoy the holiday so i studied as hard as i could for those matric exams and then afterwards i just was like whoo i'm done but then during december i was like guys like what if i'm just here chilling chilling and there you have to write a supplementary no no thank you no thank you yeah that was all i did but then anyway brushed it off my shoulders enjoyed my holiday and i was i was pleasantly surprised and Selenbosch accepted me so that is my advice i do hope that that answered your questions all the best guys all the best matrix thank you for watching and all of juice yo guys as you can see i'm in a very like playful mood joyful mood yeah anyway i'm cold let me just fix my eye. Okay, so let us begin and not make this video. Man's left early. You just study, write the exams. Yo, guys, I've never studied so hard here. This was five years ago. I think six years ago <laughs> when I was in matric. That's crazy, I feel old. Uh -huh. Even on the bad days, I think I